Hello and welcome to today's video and today I'm going to be talking about my new graphics card. Now before I get into the numbers I want to say if you like this video hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment down below let me know what you think. If you don't like the video don't just hit the thumbs down button please leave a comment let me know where I'm going wrong and hopefully I can improve my content for you guys. Now new graphics card. The graphics card I've bought is the EVGA GTX 1080 for the win hybrid edition. So basically it's got a higher clock speed out of the box than the typical reference card and it's liquid cooled and it's also got a custom PCB which is where the for the win acronym comes from. Now um, I've got in the system, I've got it running. What I have done is I've ditched the standard original EVGA fan that came with it. In fact, I've got it's, uh, this fan here, the standard all black, typical fan. It is a, a 0.2 amp fan. It was pretty high speed, but I wanted something a little bit quieter and I also had two fans lying about. So the two fans I had lying about were the Corsair SP120 Quiet Edition fans. So the static pressure fans, very optimized for airflow through radiators and the Quiet Edition, I've got it in push-pull. So yeah, it's doubled up. And so yeah, they've dropped the Celsius around about eight degrees, eight to 10 degrees Celsius, just by swapping out the standard push fan well, it came up pre-mounted on the radiator as push, but obviously you can use it as a pull. But I've replaced it with two quiet edition fans and they're running at about 700 RPM. Now, as for a little bit of an overclock, obviously I haven't had this graphics card for too long. I haven't had a play about with it as much as I would have liked to, but I've just overclocked and basically power and temp target uh, on maximum and I've also got the GPU clock plus 100 megahertz and I've got the memory clock plus 400 megahertz pretty simple I punched them in it's been working fine through all my benchmarks and things like that now on GPU Z and the desktop that's shown a boost clock of 1960 megahertz Take that with a pinch of salt because I have seen higher frequencies in games. Obviously, GPU Boost 3.0, it more or less overclocks itself up and down as, as the keep with thermals and power and things like that. But there's plenty of videos online, so basically I'm just going to show you real world figures. I've got it in the case, I haven't got an open bench, I've got how I'm going to be using it and day to day so this is how it's going to perform it's true it's real life so we'll move on to some benchmarks okay so the first benchmark i'm going to be doing is valley it's a few year old but it's still a good benchmark and yeah so we're going to be doing this 2560 by 1440 because obviously that's the monitor i use i'm always going to be gaming at this resolution it's uh, eight times anti-ASIN quality on ultra so everything's maxed out on this on DirectX 11 so let's run it and let's see how well it performs now remember I've got this with 100 megahertz overclock I'm just hit the uh, benchmark so according to uh, EVGA precision we are getting a 2114 megahertz overclock and this is in the benchmark, it's what it's getting. Straight away, this is very smooth, in the 80 frames per second, dropping down to 60, 70, climbing back up to 80, 77. Yep, now, temperature on this, it's holding at about 39 degrees Celsius, gone back down to 38. Let's have a look. Yeah, about 39 degrees Celsius, so it's pretty pretty good cooling solution like I say I've got 120% power 
overclocked. So it's just hit 40 degrees Celsius. Okay, so the Valley benchmark's finished. And basically the thing that I noticed on that one was the boost clock actually dropped. So it dropped down to 2101 megahertz. Memory overclock was still 5400 megahertz. So it had the 400 megahertz overclock still on there. And the temperature rose all the way up to 48 degrees C on the GPU. So pretty happy with that, it's uh, decent. Now the score I got on Valley was 3017. This is ultra quality, everything maxed out, DirectX 11, 2560 by 1440, eight time anti-ASIN. So it's a pretty strenuous test. And the frame, average frame per second was 72.1, and the minimum was 28.5 of a maximum of 142. So, really good, I'm happy with that. Okay, so moving on to heaven. Now, settings I've got for this, DirectX 11, ultra quality, tessellations on extreme, eight times anti-ASIN, and again, 2560 by 1440. So, we'll see how, how much stress this can put on the graphics card now. So I'm gonna hit benchmark and we'll see what it gets up to. Now the graphics card's already warm because I've jumped straight into this. And again, we're seeing that 2114 megahertz overclock, which I'm expecting to drop down. Yeah, there it goes. It's dropped down to 2101. Obviously, it's the, it's the character of the card. This whole 10 series from Nvidia I've read online, they do quite a lot, where frequency will drop slightly once you're actually in the game, into the benchmark, and yeah. So, about 47 degrees Celsius, so it's pretty, it, it's great for a graphics card, it's about 20 less than an air-cooled graphics card, I would say, the average. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty quiet. Obviously the fans are set push-pull, around about 700 RPM and it's performing pretty well for me. So all the way up to 48 degrees Celsius there. So far on this benchmark we've averaged 68 frames per second on heaven, 1440p, everything maxed out. Okay, so that's the heaven benchmark. And as you can see, Half decent score, 72 frames per second, so it's well above the, the golden 60 hertz, 60 frames per second, shall I say. Maximum hit 161, almost the limit of my monitor at 165, and minimum was 30, which I know is a loading screen on this one, so it's about right that. Now, what I have noticed on the temperature, obviously I said this was already warmed up from the previous benchmark, but now we are seeing 52 degrees Celsius. So it's starting to get into the, what I would say, the, the higher, high end air coolers, the ones with the big triple fans and things like that. But it's still quiet, still cool. Obviously, you're not having fans ramped up all the way into the one and a half thousand RPM. So I'm pretty happy with it. As long as it doesn't get over 55 degrees Celsius, I'm happy with that. So, moving on. Now, moving on onto the classic benchmark, Firestrike. And I'm benchmarking this at 1080p for the simple reason Firestrike is a very popular score that everyone understands, and 1080p is the still the most common resolution. So to give you guys an understanding of where my system comes in line with your own, for example, or others out there, 1080p, it's pretty universal. And yeah, so just letting the benchmark run. Okay, so there's the fire strike score, 18, 33, two. Now I know it's not the best score out there for this card, but it's a massive jump up from the 12,000 I was getting with a single GTX 980. So it's a healthy step up. I'm happy with it. And it also gives you a rough score of where my where the single 1080 falls 
against others. Okay, moving on to games. First one, we've got Arkham Knight. Now, it's a poorly optimized game, and what I wanna say now is, for this benchmark, I've got my old GTX 980 running as a physics card to give the 1080 a fighting chance, and obviously you wanna get over that uh, 90 frames per second that this game's capped at, and basically, I don't wanna see it drop below 90, so I'm using it as a physics card, give it the best possible chance and we'll see how well this performs now. Okay, so we're currently sitting about 130 frames per second, 125. It's uh, GPU's running about 45 degrees Celsius. We've got that overclock of, well, we did have it, 2114, but it's now dropped down to the 2101 again, using 3.1 just over 3.2 gigabytes of VRAM, rising to 3.6. Obviously this is an eight gigabyte card and we've just hit the four gigabyte mark, so plenty of VRAM to go. We're averaging 126 frames per, per second. So yeah, th this game has became playable in my eyes. I can now look forward to playing this because I've been putting it off and yeah, so the car comes in now, obviously this is a big frames per second hit on this, so 114, 110, 112. Let's see what happens. It's about the same. I know once you're in the car driving, you do take a frames per second hit. So right now we're dropping down to 85, 87. Still rocking about 47 degrees Celsius, 4.4 gigabytes of VRAM used. And there we have it. So the benchmark is average 116 frames per second and a minimum of 40. This game for me has became playable. It's took a couple of years, it's been out a while, obviously. Paid a lot of money for it, 45, 50 pounds, whatever it was at the time I bought it. I've never had a chance to play it, so hopefully I get it smashed in, get it played. I love the old Arkham Origins, and yeah, hope I really do hope I'll enjoy this one. So we've moved on to Formula One 2016, to game I'm still playing, and yeah, so I haven't got 2017 yet, but we're gonna just check the settings. So again, 1440p, 165 refresh rate, V-Sync is off. SMAA and TAA and EA listen and also everything set to the ultra ultra high preset everything's maxed out can't slide it over any further and we are going to go and benchmark so run it so in the benchmark we're hovering around 85 frames per second Dropping down to 79 there, 81, 78. So yeah, it's above the 60 frames per second. Obviously it's a car game. You don't need to be too precise with it, but you do need to get above that magic number of 60 frames per second. And obviously with a G-Sync monitor like my own, it's pretty smooth, looks great. And yeah, just wait for the results now. Okay, so that's the benchmark finished. And basically we've got total frames, 10,248. Average frames, 97 frames per second. 74 is a minimum and 115 is the max. So it's very playable. So I'll be enjoying this game and yeah, happy with that. Okay, so the final game I'm gonna be showing you is Rise of the Tomb Raider. Now, I've got everything maxed out for this game. The only thing I haven't got is the anti and maxed out, which I'm actually using FXAA. Obviously, it's an intensive game, this. Got some, some parts where it's, uh, you drop frames and things like that. So start the benchmark, see how we get on. Okay, so straight away, 144 frames, 156 frames. I can say this game, this graphics card on this game, 
pisses it all over basically. It See, we're dropping down to 93 frames, 88, 85, maybe I spoke too soon there. <clears throat> so yeah, so we're about 93 frames per second there. It's uh, looking good though. Like I say, I could never have these settings with my GTX 980 graphics card. And just looking at the VRAM usage there, we're using 7.3 gigabytes, so we're almost at the eight gigabyte limit, which is interesting for this game. Drop back down to 6.6 .6 uh, gigabytes for the VRAM. We're hovering about 48 degrees Celsius, 93 frames per second. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. This this game has became playable. I've already completed it. it was just the first game I've done a full walkthrough on this channel, I think. So yeah, if you want to see that, have a look in the playlists. And yeah, so the overall score is 103.95 frames per second, minimum of 45. So that's very playable, very enjoyable, 1440p, Rise of the Tomb Raider. So there you have it, it's my new graphics card. I'm going to be using it for all the gameplay videos coming up. And yeah, just want to say I'm really happy with this graphics card. It performs exactly how I wanted it to perform for 1440p. Obviously, there's a few games that I'm now getting well over the 100 frames per second. So it really brings the game, really brings the game visuals to life, and I really enjoy it. So yeah, so if you like this video, hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. But basically I've done this video just to share with you guys how well this performs and yeah obviously a GDX 1080 is still expensive it's probably too expensive so I'm not going to talk about money because right now with the whole mining thing and GPU prices it's I don't recommend investing in the graphics card but for me I felt like the time was right to actually purchase the card itself I could have went for 1080 Ti, but I thought, for me, by the time I feel the benefit of a Ti, it will be outdated by something else. So the 80 series of the Nvidia lineup suits me very well. The, the previous generation, the Strix, still got it in there as a physics card, just for that one game, Arkham Knight. Once I get bored of Arkham Knight, I'll probably sell the graphics card on eBay, make 200 pounds. You know, I could finance something else for myself. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.